Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jay, and here we talk about the popular culture of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So I wanted to change things up a little bit today. I keep talking about anime, cartoons, some TV shows that I really used to love. But I do have to remember that if it wasn't for a certain type of media, we wouldn't be able to enjoy all these old retro cartoons or programs because this particular media helped to preserve it so that we can enjoy it today. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the video cassette tape. So, video cassettes have been around pretty much forever. I remember them becoming really popular in the 70s and 80s. They were pretty much the only way you can get to watch home video releases of your favorite films. Around the time, I think it was the late 70s, video rental stores became a huge deal. Um, they started rele releasing pre-recorded video copies of movies and television shows so that they could be released to the general public. Unfortunately, they were extremely expensive. I remember at one point, a video cassette tape could cost as much as $200. You gotta think, $200 for a video cassette sounds ludicrous, but it wasn't that long ago that recordable DVDs and CDs were somewhere in the $100 range in and of themselves. So you understand, you begin to understand that the cost of production at the time was astronomical. The only ones who could really afford videotapes at the time were video rental stores. And in the 1980s, video rental was the king. I know today, you can pretty much turn on your TV, switch on your PlayStation or Rogers box or anything right now, cable box, sorry, and you could pretty much flip to Netflix and just pick any movie you want. But back in the day, we had to go to a place like Blockbuster Video or Jumbo Video, Rogers Video here in Canada, and you had shelves upon shelves of video cassettes, any sort of genre you could imagine to go pick up a movie on Saturday night and watch it for the rest of the weekend. Yep, that's how it was back in the 80s. Let me tell you, going to the video store on Thursday with your father or mother was a pretty big deal as a kid. You would pretty much run into Video 99, Rogers Video, Jumbo Video, whatever the flavor was at the time. And I would just immediately dart to the kids section where I would find amazing cartoon tapes like The Amazing Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Macron One. As always, the popular X-Men. Some of my most cherished memories are of watching Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But to be perfectly honest with you, the programs themselves weren't really what got me excited. What really got me excited was this tiny little logo here, F-H-E, which stood for Family Home Entertainment. Call me crazy, but when that logo came up and the way it drew itself in, I remember I was in for at least a half an hour of great cartoon fun. As time moved on, more and more of my favorite cartoon shows would end up on video cassette tape, including Centurions, Saber Rider, and the Star Sheriffs, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and even movies like An American Tale. As much as I love videotapes, they do have their flaws. Mostly in the fact that they're not a digital media. They're an analog media, which means over time, if one were to duplicate a videotape from another videotape, the signal would eventually degrade into an unwatchable film. Then that's not even talking about 
the overall life expectancy of a videotape, which as a magnetized media can degrade over time. Then there are the VCRs, which the videotapes run on. As long as the VCR is working in tip top order, we really don't have any issues. But as with anything with gears and switches, they too can suffer old age and gears, belts, anything that's inside the video cassette player can wear down over time. Sometimes, one of the worst things that a collector could ever happen to is for their cassette tape, which they've been cherishing for years, gets caught inside their video cassette player. Then, you only have to hope that you don't have a situation where the tape itself is open, unlocked, wound up, and then you're left with a gigantic mess. <sighs> Videotapes were pretty amazing, but as with anything, they could only last for so long. Eventually, technology would introduce to us the DVD player. And VHS's days were numbered. The most popular format of video cassette was the VHS. There was the beta cassette tape, and it really was in a lot of ways superior to VHS. But in terms of overall market penetration, these giant sized tapes became the normal. Shh, be very, very quiet. Yeah. What's up, Doc? I'm hunting for the sharpest VCR picture. Then what are you doing over there? Sony Super Beta has a picture like real life. 20% sharper than the one that beat VHS. <sighs> the Mighty Videotape has pretty much long gone. We don't really get many pre-recorded tapes anymore with video releases. Now, if you want to get a videotape today, you can pretty much pick up a standard two or four pack of blank video cassettes for probably less than a dollar, I would imagine. They still remain to this day as being a great piece of video history. And we also have to remember that for a time, this dominated the video market in North America. Well guys, that'll about do it for my look back at the videotape. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving me a like. It really helps me out. And also consider subscribing as I produce more of these videos every week. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions on cartoons, anime, technology, or anything else you'd like me to review, please leave that in the comment section below. And also consider sharing this video with someone who you think might enjoy it. Well guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. Check out some of the other episodes I've done. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter.